Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Hillier Gate Sports Center on the campus of Indiana Purdue at Fort Wayne. I'm Paul Farbaugh, joined by Michelle Conley tonight. The wrap up of the Fort Wayne National Bank Pepsi Invitational. It's number one, Manitoba. They are from Canada against IPFW. Let's throw it down to the floor and pick up the starting lineups with Eric Agnew. Middle hitter, a 6'5 senior from Brandon, Canada. Number five, Ken Cron. At outside hitter, a 6'6 senior from Winnipeg, Canada. Number six, Jules Martins. At outside hitter, a 6'5 sophomore from Winnipeg, Canada. Number seven, Eric Smith. At setter, a 6'3 senior from Winnipeg, Canada. Number eight, Scott Koski. And at outside hitter, a 6'7 junior from Winnipeg, Canada. Number 11, Andrew Zorowski. Head coach of the Bisons is Garth Pinchy. And now our IPFW Volley Dons. At center, a 6'3 senior from Monroe, Michigan, number three, Scott Lauer. At swing hitter, a 6'4 sophomore from Cogus, Puerto Rico, number five, Ricardo Soler. At middle hitter, a 6'6 senior from Ponce, Puerto Rico, number seven, Felipe Rolot. At swing hitter, a 6'5 freshman from Ellenwood, Georgia, number eight, David Wilhoyd. At middle hitter, a 6'5 freshman from Thessaloniki, Greece, number 11, George Aikova. And at opposite, a 6'4 senior from Detroit, Michigan, number 12, Craig Spider Collins. Head coach of the Volley Dons is Arnie Ball. Uh, there you go, the starting lineups one more time for Manitoba that comes in here at 32 and 0. Greg Cott is an outside hitter. Ken Cron is a middle hitter. He's a 6'5 senior. Jules Martin, this guy can get up. 6'6 senior, he's outside. Eric Smith is an outside hitter. Scott Koski, or Koski is the real way it's pronounced. We'll differ from the official uh, pronunciation down the floor. Andrew Zorowski getting a start tonight. He's an outside hitter, 6'7". This team is loaded with juniors, seniors. There are seniors, a lot of fifth-year players on this team. For IPFW, the same starting six as last night. David Wilhoyt, Forrest Gump, number eight, gets a start. He's going to be back passing with Ricardo Soler. Paul Farbaugh along with Michelle Conley. Michelle has quite a volleyball pedigree as she played here at IPFW. I'm not exactly sure of the years. Last year, one year. One year. Four-year basketball there. So, so you know about Tim Heffron, you know. Yeah, I've volleyball. played for all of them here. Uh, okay. <laughs> so we'll be looking forward to your commentary tonight. <laughs> IPFW uh, played well in spots last night, but they could not side out. They got in a side out rut. Part of the problem, Scott Lauer, only about 40% with that right thumb, and he couldn't reject, uh, redirect a lot of passes. So see if he can do something tonight. Right off the bat, Ricardo Solar. Two-man stuff. That's George Aikovu. And George wanted us to get that right. Aikovu, the stress on Vu. He's a freshman from Greece. Yeah, George is a 24-year-old freshman. It'll be nice having him around four years. He's got quite a bit of volleyball experience. And the thing is, Coach, right out there. Coach Ball mentioned about George is he's just getting used to the system, and he's shown such rapid improvement. He's been here now 10 days, and you've only had him in practice, and he's picked up the system. And Coach Ball is, well, he's forced to play him, but he, he's comfortable playing him in the middle, and he played really well last night. Collins on the outside, one-on-one -on -one block, out of bounds. Ricky Soler back to serve now, one to one. Didn't see a lot of the jump last night on the serve. IPFW, frankly, just didn't serve very well. 19 service errors and only five service aces. Collins with a dig and a little push. There you can see the problem that Scott's going to have redirecting the ball in that long set with that right thumb. The thumb is very important on the long sets. That's where the strength comes from, really. Zorowski on serve, one apiece.
straight down. Jules Martin. Martin. Yeah, I'm wondering part of IPFW, um, their lack of jump serving might have been they have so many injuries with uh, Papo with the back injury, right. the thumb injury. And Rolot oh. stepping in the pass there. That's Ricardo Soler's zone. They're taking, let's see what the back row rotation is here. Got David Wilhoyt. Are we going to go with three passers? No, Wilhoyt is not passing right now. Ricardo Soler is in this rotation. Back set. Michael Vu dug up by Manitoba. Collins up with it, still alive. One to get it over. Lauer dumps. And Ico Vu not up quickly enough. And Eric Smith there in the middle for Manitoba. Put the ball down. There is one guy on the bench for Manitoba that can touch 11 10. And that is. Pretty impressive vertical. Big bounce at time by Craig Collins. The one who can match him on the bounce, Stephen Welch. He's number 10. He's a fifth year senior, 6'4. You will see some playing time. Had extensive playing time last night for Manitoba. They beat Ball, uh, excuse me, Ohio State in four. Give that one to Rolot. Collins was there too. I think Pepe. Uh, yeah, I think you'd have to go with the double up. block there. Not sure which one actually got their hands on it. Ikevu on serve at 2 4. Combination play that's caught. It's interesting, George back there serving. When he came in to show Arnie what he could do a couple months ago, he came in here with a broken hand serving all that pain, blocking balls. Yeah, complete broken bones in his hand. Is that right? Oh, a little finesse there by Rolot. Tough set for him to handle. Test out. And Craig Collins going back to serve. Collins to serve. This is one of the gentlemen that needs to step it up. An aggressive serve that time just missing, but IPFW had far too many service errors last night, weren't even in the neighborhood. We'll develop that storyline as we go along. The serve and the pass going to be the most important for this young team. That net serve there by Jules Martins for Manitoba. Hopefully that'll give us another chance here at a point. This is Forrest Gump, <laughs> a.k.a. David Wilhoyt. I, I think Steve Simonson stuck that name on him, and you're dead once yeah. Simonson puts a nickname <laughs> on you. I believe it was Steve about the first day he got here. Now, Forrest is one with probably the least volleyball experience of anybody here. He was playing in a tournament with his brother and cousin and had someone give him Arnie's card. Never played organized in his life, and he's really helped out a lot. But touch. That's off the fingertips. Collins with a high flat. But one of the things uh, the players have told me about Forrest, and Coach Ball has said, too, that he has a lot of natural ability, and sometimes you just have to let him go, no, not talk oh, yeah. to him about it. Another service error by Rolot this time. Just let yeah. him play. He doesn't realize he's playing good volleyball. <laughs> yeah, he has different technique, but he seems to get the job done. Three pass he's another one. I'm not sure what his vertical is, but he gets up there. Well, he's supposed to be able to touch 11-7, so that would put him in the neighborhood of around 40. So. Ken Cron back to serve for Manitoba. Already IPFW showing they could side out a little better than they did last night. One on one. Govu dug up. Martins wants it back. Block. I believe Ricky touched that one. Plenty of time to see that and get outside. So they're joining. Like Govu putting the seal on the tape. And now this is Scott Lauer, senior center out of Monroe, Michigan. A quick put down there for Manitoba. Got to get the block up on those. Well, Michelle, you probably, where did you play? Did you play middle blocker? Yes, I did. What <laughs> now is, I know how tough it is yes. to get over there. <laughs> and, and just coming, I mean, obviously there's a different type of style as Collins is stuffed by Martins. There's a different type of style in the international game as to, uh, I, uh, you know, the way colleges around here play, different type thinking. 
What is George, I mean, have you picked up anything yet, things he needs to do on, as a middle blocker? Is he not getting up quickly enough, or he's just, you know, learning the system? Or what, what can you see that he needs to work on right now? Yeah, probably just reading more where the set is going to. Mm -hmm. um, looks like he takes him an extra second there to realize where the set's going, and then he gets over there half a second late. Uh, he'll pick it up real quick. I'm sure probably by game two he'll already know, be reading the setter. And that's one of the things a middle blocker has to do, read the setter and read the hitter. 6-2, Manitoba out on top. Fort Wayne National Bank, Pepsi Invitational. It's the finale. We mentioned on it last night. Might as well talk about it again. IPFW really down in the personnel department. And they're missing two key players. Perhaps Bramperditis, the biggest loss because he was going to be the primary passer. He's gone with an ACL and Wayne Williams as well with a torn ACL. Yeah, I think Wayne was a pretty big loss too. You know, he came out last year in Final Four and really put on a, quite a show. And... You know, he just came around the end of that year. He had practiced real hard. Him and Scott were in the gym almost every day this summer, working real hard, working on Wayne's hitting. They're getting excited to play together. And then Wayne was out. So I know for the team, you know, they're really missing Wayne as well. Wayne was going to fill in at middle, and there was one of the middles. Paper a lot with a blue ball from the back row, looking with some authority from back there. Paper likes to hit the quick hitter in the middle, and that time no penetration by Michael Booth. Already the pace is faster last night, Michelle. I know you're in the crowd watching the game, but the pace is much faster than what IPFW and George Mason was last night. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we have quite a bit more experienced team out here in Manitoba. They're going to keep things going at the pace they want. Craig Collins there. Those are the hits we're gonna need to see to get us back in this game. We have IPFW down right now, seven to two. I go go back on serve. The kill by Smith, side up as a Smith serve. Pretty play in the offense, a little more complex than what IPFW is running this year. Might have recognized that from the other side of the net last year with Boy Ball. Had to go block, touched out. IPFW get another chance. We have Craig Collins back to serve. And Papa motioning to Scott to get the set just a little higher so he can snap down, get that over the hands the next time. Catching block. Martins. Tough serve, nice pass by Solaire coming through Wilhoyt. Oh, too far under the net that time. He couldn't slow down his momentum. Just stepped under and made contact with the guy. And the rule on that is if you can go underneath the net before the ball is touched or touches the floor. Side out or point of work in the other team. This is Martins. A serve there for Martins. Nine to two the score. They are just <laughs> really consistent. This team doesn't <laughs> make mistakes and the ball doesn't touch their side of the court. The IPFW is using three passers now. He's in Will Hoyt as well. <laughs> wow, he put that one down. That was Ken Cron. Can't give him an overpass like that. Ten to two. See if he took any air out of the box. Maybe he did. Martin's hitting long. And this is forced on serve at 210. And that is by my count unofficial, but that's a fourth service error by IPFW. Like they're on last night's pace at this rate. You said that, Michelle, so they can put that down in the book. <laughs> Overpass. Let's talk a little bit about the three passer system. Right now, you have a lot sometimes floating in back there. The primary Looks passer, like we have two back there right now. The primary passer is going to be Ricardo. He steps in front of the forest. The kill by Zorowski, point man. Andrews 
Zorowski with the kill. And it's 12 to 2. And normally IPFW goes up to Canada to play some of the top talent. Manitoba always on the list this year. Manitoba coming in. First trip for them. Yeah, IPFW went up there Thanksgiving weekend. Got a look at some of these teams. I believe they ranked about eighth out of thir 32 teams up there. They had quite a good performance. Fourteen to game point here. Don't forget to sign up for your chance to win many exciting prizes. Manitoba looking uh, like the they are the number one team right now. The between games two and three. You can sign up at the apparel table and listen for your name to be called. Take a while for IPFW to get it ironed out. I know Coach Ball just right now, this game, uh, first game is pretty much over with 14 2. Try and get something positive going here in games two and three. See what you can take away from this match. Will Hoyt, another shank, got to dump it over. Whoa! Uh, look down. Puerto Ricans there in the middle with Pepa and Ricky. Hopefully that'll get the momentum back. Might be a little too late. I know for a fact that's not the way the side out is designed. <laughs> no way. Lauer brings it back. This is Soler. Reset now outside. Martins. Michael Boo wins it in the net. And we have Ken Cron back serving for game point for Manitoba. Solaire, did he catch fingertips? He oh, didn't. Oh, I thought I saw it too. None of our officials caught it. 15-2, that one was rather quick. It took about 10 minutes to play the first game. Manitoba establishing some dominance, got on a roll. IPFW, same problems, siding out, passing problems hurting them. Four service errors in their first game. We're going to take a timeout right now. We come back, game two, IPFW versus the University, Manitoba. at 7 p.m. for IPFW Volley Down Highlights. We'll also describe strategies and fundamentals for all you new volleyball fans. We, we may even invite a Volley Down or two to join us on the show, so tune in to us every Friday night at 7 p.m. here on Channel 6. This is the increasingly competitive
This is the increasingly competitive world we live in. And this is the country we want ahead of the competition. These are the people we'll be depending on to keep this country ahead of the competition. These are the colleges and universities we're relying on for the people we're depending on to keep this country ahead of the competition. So if you want America to stay number one in the world, do something about it. Give to the college of your choice. Welcome back to the Harrier Gate Sports Center. I'm Paul Farbaugh, joined by Michelle Conley, former IPFW standout, right? Something like that, I okay. suppose. <laughs> well, the, the, I know about standout. Well, I played three sports here, so you got to know something from that. How about the stats that stand out for that? That's a really good segue. I came up with that one by myself. Manitoba hitting 350 hitting percentage, IPFW 150. We always sort of equate that to a batting average. It's not exactly like a batting average. You can have really more points to it, but, you know, between 50 and 100 more points, and that would be sort of equal to a batting average. But the thing about IPFW, three service errors already, and uh, hey, Manitoba's just, had two. Just Well, also, but Manitoba has four races as well, but they're just not getting consistency out of the passing. Yeah, the passing really starts it all off, and... If we don't start passing better, we're going to remain in trouble here. I'd see Justin Luna, a freshman, come in. He uh, came in the middle of the first game last night, took over some passing chores. That's a header. Chrome Dome Collins saved, though, by Manitoba. Off the fingertips, two to get it over. Lauer on the reset. Soler on the outside. Good transition by IPFW that time. Lauer on serve at 1-0. He played club volleyball at Michigan for one year, transferred and sat behind ball for two years. Played at Michigan for two years. Two years. Two years. Sat behind Lowy. He didn't play much at IPFW. He's gotten a lot of playing experience um, out at Nationals and Olympic Fest. He's played at Olympic Festivals for two years. Both times. One All-American honors at Nationals. Mm -hmm. And both times in the Olympics, the junior uh, came away with a bronze medal. It was really, I mean, that's the thing. He looked so good this summer. And uh, last night, I wasn't really thinking. He was only about 40% with that thumb. He was not the Scott Lauer we saw. Felipe getting the ball. Stuck up there above the speakers. Finally falling. Arnie doesn't look too happy about something. See if we can pick up the official. Will Hoyt, another bad pass. Lauer digging it up. There's nowhere to go with it. Will Hoyt into the net. That one got pushed a little too far outside and on top of the net. Will Hoyt just couldn't quite reach it. And here is Justin Luna. One, one. Justin should really help out with the passing here. And they don't test him the first time. Lauer, the quick hitter. Collins had really nowhere to put that. Luna had the two-man block up right in front of him. This team a little disoriented, IPFW, right now. Got to get a good pass here. See if they go to Luna. Good pass, Collins off the tips. By the back set there from Lauer to Collins. And IPFW is down right now, two to one. George uh, went to Memphis State for a quarter. So I'm not sure if he has uh, four years of eligibility or not. I believe he does. He went last year, you four to play five, and I don't think he played down there. No, he didn't. Yeah, as far as from what the players have had to say, he's going he's gonna to be here four years, eligibility. Good call by Ikevu on that time. And that's his job, so Lair letting it go. It was out of bounds. Craig Collins, the Spider-Man. See the jump serve here this time. It's a good one, but the cut across by Martins. Whipped it across his body. This guy has got the total package. Has the serve 
there as well. That was tough. Just a bad rotation for IPFW right now. But it's stuck. There, put down Pepa. We got Luna back to serve now. He's up there with Pepa on that block. I believe he had quite a few service errors last night as well. Was he, 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 had, he had a few. And, uh, you know, it, he's a freshman, and it's not one of his strong points right yeah. now. But we'll get it back. Yeah, his service error was a little prettier than that one. <laughs> a little more drama involved. This is relied on serve at 1-2. Paper coming back from a back sprain service ace. Real impressive to see him jump up with that, come out with that strong serve. They weren't even sure if he was going to play this weekend with his back. It wasn't decided until yesterday's warm-ups that he could go out there and play. That's right. He did practice with the team yesterday, but weightlifting uh, accident, strain the back. I believe he said he was doing squats. I'm surprised he'd be lifting that heavy. They're in season now. Strain the back for a week. So Lair, an overpass. Joust. Luna comes up with it, but it's out of bounds. That's one area Loy's height helps a lot. Oh, yeah. Loy is doing really well with the national team, although they slipped a little bit in the Super 4 tournament in Japan just in uh, January. They came in fourth place out of four teams. But before he clicked, once he got his finger healed up and that team got together when Bob Subvert licked the man with one bow, joined the team, uh, they took third place in the world championships. And Loy Ball doing very well on the team. Yeah, they did real well in their Midwest tour out here against Japan. I believe they won Chicago, Milwaukee. I don't recall the Detroit game. And Scott Lauer back to serve. IPFW is down right now, four to two. Luna with the save. We have someone in the net. Is that George Ikevu? Not sure. I think that's who the call was on. So Manitoba's going to get the serve. That's one thing about a middle blocker. You, when you jump forward, you're supposed to have your hands at your side, but he seems to be jumping forward and jumping into the net. Jumping into the net. Yeah, that was one problem I had as a volleyball player, used to jumping with the basketball style, <laughs> bringing those arms up strong. Get you got to watch something in front of you there. And that one will be long. Koski service here. Looks like Solaire's going to go to the jump. A little too much on that one. <laughs> nice Luna. pass by Luna. Feeling you're not going to you're gonna be able to finesse this Manitoba team. Luna. Yeah, rolled across the net and just down. And here he is, the bass master, Mike Tremolin. <laughs> Six seven, Mike is a sophomore, got a lot of time at middle last year. Mike played a little middle this year, but he's really the backup setter, and he serves he serves very well, especially that one zone. Hit the net, going for it this time. And I put the whammy on. And Eric Smith back to serve for Manitoba. Nice pass. That's a combination you like to see. Perfect pass, short set there to Papa. Puts it down. That's a play. If they can run the quick hitter over the middle, That'll be very effective. Rilad is very good at it, but it all starts with the pass. The pass has to be in the right position. It has to be quick. Outside to Luna. Luna one-on-one, -on -one, dug up. And that one will be out. Cop missing wide. IPFW breaking the side out rut and actually getting a point. Collins on serve at 3-5.
Ken Cron. Got quite an arm swing up there. Gonna yeah. put a lot of those down. He had a couple big bounces last night. Call the one that went up up on the IPFW track. Is there a special name for that when it goes up on the track? <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure what you call it. <laughs> Back row, Luna, Luna with a block. A single block. Down and Papal just tossed it over. There was no one standing in the back covering. IPFW will get another. Oh, we have a side out. Thought we had a point there. Jules Martin came from the back row and he can put the heat on and Luna standing his ground. List him at six feet. He might be that, he might not. Here's Martins again. Tick the tape. Lauer back set for Collins a little low. Reset now. Straight down. Double block there. We have Papa and Scott Lauer. I believe Papa got his hands on it. IPFW's got another point. Koski gave away where that ball was going. Bent his back before he put the back set out wide. Two men up for IPFW. Relot, Lauer turning. Relot, and that's going to be four, four hits. Good effort, though. I'm not sure they even saw where the ball was going. Stuck a hand out there. When a player goes up for the block, they're supposed to turn immediately and look for the ball, and uh, Lauer got a piece of it. Collins. Just like that one, lost it in his arms on that block. Collins really likes it on the right side. A lot at 4-5. Good jump. Nice pass. A low set there. He just kind of line drived it over. Able to dig him up. Reset. Nice yeah, hands by Termola. One to take advantage of. Ricky on the outside. Blocked. IPFW couldn't get to it. Papa in position just has to pop that one straight up. One thing you notice right away, though, with Mike Tremolin in, just by virtue of being 6'7", they have to respect his quick hitting ability. Will he have someone into the net? Yeah, Mike Tremolin there got the nickname Noodle, that floppy arm, and I think he's so difficult to block because you can never tell his timing when he is swinging down at the ball. That's one of the new plays IPFW's put in this year. It's called the green set, and it's where the uh, middle hitter slides behind the center and tries to cut the ball across the body. And Mike's very good at it. It is a deceptive shot. It's, it's meant to be that way. But Mike's not your traditional power hitter in the middle. No, he's not. Good call on that one. Scott Lauer will go back to serve for IPFW. 4-7 the score. Game number two, 15-2 is the score in game number one, Manitoba. Out quickly. There's a slide behind. And they'll call that one in. Eric Smith with a kill. And Manitoba really runs a fast offense, and you can tell because their passes coming off their serve uh, receptions are just lower, quicker paced. Collins off the two-man block tool. Collins had four kills in that first game. I'm not sure how many he's gotten here in this one. Hit 500, That's so he was uh, doing his job at opposite. That's where he's more comfortable at. That time off the block, out of bounds. Yeah, he's been moved all around opposite middle. I know this. He, he, he liked the middle a little bit, but the one thing that threw him was that defensive stuff you have to do in the middle. He just uh, couldn't get used yeah. to it last year. Termolin with a push, missing wide. I think he wasn't sure about the set on that one. He just had to get up and tip the ball. Luna, good pass. Collins, and he's blocked. A point Manitoba. Well, I think uh, Lauer has to run the middle a little bit. They're sitting on the outside waiting for Collins or Luna. And IPFW going to take a timeout. Manitoba Perhaps running it. off two points. Perhaps that's what Arnie wanted a timeout to talk to them about. 
while we have this moment here. I'd like to let you know about the College Cable Access Program Guide. It provides information about our programming, including IPFW Sports Telecast. To receive your free Channel 6 Guide program, send your name, address, zip code to on your screen there and get out the bifocals. If you can read it there, Channel 6 IPFW 2101 Classing Boulevard, East Fort Wayne, Indiana. Zip 46805. You can always give us a call at 4816000. Well, IPFW seems to have gotten it back together a little bit here. 9-4, siding out a little more. Closed it to one point at 5-4. And it all starts with the serve. The serve has to be a little better for IPFW. They're really working Justin Luna over right now. It's time to go with Solaire. Solaire. Tremolin failing to cover up. Collins was up. Tremolin didn't read it. I'm sure, did that go off the hands of Collins or roll across the net there? <laughs> Definitely wasn't a hard put down kill. Relax, oh, back row. Off the head. They yeah. put that one down right off the head of Ken Cron. And uh, you're going to have to numb that up with a six-pack, perhaps. That one got the crowd into it a little bit here. Those are always fun. You ever have one of those, Michelle? <laughs> <laughs> oh, not me. <laughs> then again, I was probably standing in the wrong place on defense <laughs> to get that. 10-4 <laughs> right now, Manitoba in game two. There's the quick attack, the etching line. Felipe likes that ball a little quicker, but that time caught the end line. And that's what IPFW needs to do. They're running middle now, and they're going to Berlot. Almost an ace serve there by Craig Collins. Back over to IPFW. Tipped by Papa. Back row. Tremolin in position, can't come up with it. IPFW is going to use three passers again. They've just moved Craig Collins up. What that does is that takes away the amount of area that Justin Luna has to cover. And also cuts down on the amount of territory Ricky Soler has to cover as well. In a certain rotation, they're going to do that. You have a substitution here for Manitoba. Trevor Dimitrik. Yeah, that sounds good. We'll go with that. <laughs> Placing Eric Smith. The 6'5 senior. Dug up by Luna. Ooh, the Hit. set by Soler. Yeah, when Scott's thumb was really bad, Soler did most of their setting in the preseason. He set up in. Uh, Canada, as well as their preseason tournament at Ball State. Smith, the jump set. He jump sets nearly every time. Or, excuse me, that's Koski, 6-3. Just gives a little more speed to the offense. He meets the ball a little higher, a little faster. Doesn't give the blocking time to set up. There's the quick hitter. Just missed time by Relot. Garrett Cott back to serve for Manitoba. Over the two-man block, Collins. Called in. Spiders definitely putting that ball down hard this year. Services. This will be the time to do it, get the momentum changed again. Didn't, well. And you would think it'd be just the opposite. First, you put it on full speed. Missing long that time. He this got is Cron excited on about serve. the first. Thought he tried to. Pass Tough by pass. Solaire. That 
one Paper will put down, Paper a lot. Short serve. And this takes you out of your offense. You have the safety valve on the outside. What do we and have? Block, and lift. I think they serve to uh, Zorowski, see if Flower goes right back at him. Go with the short serve to him again. Back row, Martins. He is a tough one to stop. Termolin missing, Solaire dumping over. Good heads up play by Solaire, realizing miss hit on it and getting the pass over. Penetration, Solaire and Termolin leaving a hold of the net. 12 7 now. Side Rolot off the block. Like he might have stepped over that 10 foot line coming from the back row. Indeed, He's he got did. Got to jump before the line. 13 7 the score right now. Manitoba methodically working its lead out. Winner in game one, 15 2. It's going to be a long haul for IPFW this year. I think everybody realizes that, um, especially when you've got the, the injuries that we've had off the break. Yeah, right they were that. they were young coming in. The injuries definitely haven't helped. And some freshmen getting some playing time that perhaps wouldn't have played. And uh, David Wilhoyt is one of those freshmen. A lot of athletic ability, but not much in the way of volleyball background. He would have had a year to just sit around and soak it in, but instead he gets thrown in the fire right off the bat. And he struggled a little bit this first two games as a passer. Yeah, all the freshmen getting that experience can only help them in the long run, but they're definitely hurting for some of that experience out on the floor this year. Shot of Coach Ball, his overall record here at IPFW, 251-170 on the men's side, 15th year. Of course, three Final Fours in the last four years. Maybe the best team uh, he had in those four years never made it. 93, Collins snapping one off. Well, at the break between games two and three, we're going to have uh, Blake Sebring up here. Blake uh, does some reporting for Volleyball Monthly, and of course, he's the fine columnist for the new Sentinel covering the Volley Dons and the Comets. So he'll be talking about the national scene. And we said a lot about UCLA last year. Well, look out this year. Spider will be blocked on that one. Set out to Papa, and he'll put it down. It's a big play. We're a lot around three-man block at the net. Just went right around it. The Bassmaster on serve at 7-13. Mike's from Michigan. He uh, doesn't like to fish. Woo! <laughs> Downs at Garrett Cott. He just pounded that one right down into the block. Fell down on IPFW side. As Tim Heffron would say, a draino. No penetration at the net by IPFW that time. <laughs> Lauer has to chase. Luna off the fingertips. This guy's going to be a good player. Talked about it last night. He's from Tennessee, played club ball up in Minnesota. And he won to play last year at IPFW. There was no money available. There's only four uh, uh, scholarships altogether for sports uh, in Division II. And there was no scholarship money available. Luna decided just to stick around and establish res uh, residency. He worked here for a year. Now he's got res uh, residency here, so it's a lot cheaper. Yeah, I can't say that word. I should have come up <laughs> with another word there. But but it's worked out for him, and that's, uh, that's that says a lot about his uh, character. Yeah, I believe he had even gone up and put himself in school in high school up in Minnesota so that he could play club ball. They didn't have a team around in where he was living in Tennessee, and he had some friends from a camp living up in Minnesota, so he went up there to go to school with them just to play more volleyball. 
Solaire. Blocked by Solaire. Hit into the net, Andrew Zorowski. Luna will continue the serve. And Coach Ball is calling the serves tonight. Thirteen eight the score, Manitoba. Backs at Collins off, off the block. The line. Spider's definitely doing his job tonight as well as last night. He's had a lot of kills. Ian Rallad had twenty apiece last night, so Lair had sixteen. Off the block, can't retrieve. Lauer with a slide and dive. Stuck in a side out war right now. Solaire, another high pass. Termolin. Oh, and just misread. Manitoba wasn't sure which guy was going to take it there. Nobody talked. The ball drops down between them. That note, they're going to have a substitution. Ryan Ratushniak in. I was going to let you say that. You said that <laughs> I paused there, <laughs> looking at that last name for a while. A lot of the players from Winnipeg, of course, Winnipeg is in Manitoba. PFW is going to get another point. 9 13, just hanging around. Was 9 4 at one point. Coach Ball called a timeout, decided uh, his team was going to run more middle. And there's a bonus point 10 13. Need to get the serve in here. Be nice if they can get Manitoba start creating their own airs. They've played some pretty flawless volleyball so far at this point. Zorowski with a kill. Finding a hole in the perimeter defense. Overpass. Dug up, now the reset. One to get it over. And now a chance for IPFW. Solaire, one on one block. Zorowski. And it's swing for game point. Koski on serve at 14 10. Tip it over. That was awful tight. Collins couldn't do much with it, so that's game two. IPFW trailing two to nothing. 15-10 the score in game two, 15-2 in game one. We're gonna take a break right now. We come back, we'll have a little chat with Blake Sebring. First year IPFW women's basketball coach Pam Bowden is enjoying a fine preseason after coming to IPFW from the University of Alaska Anchorage. She has inherited a club which returns no seniors but still enjoys one of the top ratings in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. We want you to tune in every Wednesday at 7.30 to find out more information about the IPFW women's basketball team all season long. In our ever-expanding world, we need a reliable source, one that addresses important aspects of our daily lives and provides us with useful information. Health and Home Report is that source, with stories on how to get the most for your money, where to go for a great vacation, hot fashion tips, what's happening in the world of arts and entertainment, and the latest medical breakthroughs. 
Health and Home Report provides a world of information. The college basketball season is underway for 1994-95, and the Great Lakes Valley Conference has been rated by some as the toughest of the NCAA Division II conferences. Join Coach Andy Piazza and me, Matt DeLong, to get a closer look at the IPFW team and this year's competition. Welcome back to the Harry Gate Sports Center. I'm Paul Farbo, joined right now by new Sentinel reporter and, of course, Volleyball Monthly contributor, senior writer, Blake uh, Sebring. And, Blake, uh, your impressions right now, first time. You didn't get to see IPFW play in person last night, covering the comments. What do you think? They got a long year. It's a young, young team. And right. they got about two players that can play right now, and they need six. Well, one thing we were talking about during the break there is Scott Lauer. And, you know, Scott said last night his thumb just wasn't, wasn't right, his right thumb can't, you know, redirect the ball off of a pass, but he's having trouble tonight. Yeah, he's having basic problems tonight. I mean, his sets, the players are having to reach outside for him and the block's waiting there. They, the ball's not where they need it to be to hit. And we know, I mean, Scott played really, really well this summer in the Olympic Festival. And uh, Yeah, that's why I got a lot of hope from this summer from seeing Scott play that well. I mean, he ran that team, and right now, it's one thing if you're not setting well, but run the team, and right now he's not running the team. Well, the team is searching right now. Rolot is not at 100%, but he has been the man that has at least been uh, giving IPFW some consistency. He and they, Craig Collins. They need to find some blocking, though, at the net, too. Yeah, they can't get in. They have no defense at all right now, and, and Manitoba can just keep siding out until they get something. There's a shot of IPFW's main man. I guess main men. Paper Rolot coming back. Uh, honorable mention. All-American last year. He's got to step it up for IPFW to do anything. Against the competition, how do you see it breaking down in the country this year? Well, this is a rotten year to have it down here. Oh, the yeah. country is way up this year. UCLA has everybody back. Penn State has almost everybody back. Uh, USC is going to be very strong, and Stanford's going to be awesome. Stanford had a couple freshmen we got to see last year. Matt Furbringer and then another kid, and I believe Lambert was he a freshman Mike Lambert, too? Right. Boy, those guys are going to be dynamite. Well, yeah, the problem with Stanford this year is they got a whole new set, which is right. similar to IPFW, and Canyon Seaman carried that team, and he made those guys 20% better all by himself. And Canyon Seaman just getting a, a look now on the Olympic team. He's really sort of like the third center behind Lloyd Ball. Yeah, Lloyd Ball's the number one. It's not going to happen for Canyon. He's just not a good enough athlete. Well, let's talk a little bit about what you see developing in the Midwest. Obviously, Ball State is, is probably the class, and I've noticed a few players in the crowd tonight from Ball State looking on. Yeah, Ball State's got to be the class, and I'm, I think Lewis is going to be second. Mm -hmm. uh, after what we saw of Ohio State tonight, I was they didn't have anything. I mean, there was no spark there, no competitiveness, no, no nothing. They just didn't have it. Ohio State may be in a little bit of the same situation as IPFW. They've got a couple really good players, Adam Spitznagel, the setter, and uh, Steve Potter, an outside hitter, who's really, really a good athlete, underrated. But it does look like Ball State is pretty much going to do the damage this year in the Midwest. Yeah, and that's the way IPFW and some of these other teams are looking at it. You just got to get to the point where everything counts in April and nothing counts up to them. I mean, the, the season can be rescued in April, but you've got to get the foundation laid now. Well, one thing IPFW has to find is a passing system they can work with. And, and in a few rotations, they're putting three passers back there. They don't want to overload uh, Solaire taking two-thirds of the court and is right. a primary passer. And the passing, sometimes, even when it's good and it gets to Lauer in the proper position, it's a little too slow. Yeah. I mean, the ball is lollipopping to Lauer. Exactly. And that kills your offense because they like to run the double-quick offense, which keeps the other team's block off balance. But with this type of slow passing, the other team pretty much can set up whatever it wants to and be ready for it. And right now, IPFW's only got uh, Collins and Rolot who can handle that type of pressure situation and can hit that. No one else can create their own offense like those two can, and you can't win with two guys. No, it's very difficult. And in this day and age, there used to be a point where there were some teams out there that you could beat. Even now, though, uh, Wisconsin-Milwaukee is coming in here uh, next Friday night. They're going to be a challenge. Can't yeah, get away with it anymore. Arnie said last week, he said we were going to lose to some teams that we haven't lost to before. And he's just got to be patient and, and, and let things develop. I mean, this is a practice for these kids. This, this match does not count on their NCAA record. 
they got to use it as a practice and just gain the experience. I mean, that's the only way they're going to get better. There's nothing more they can do technically or strategically. They just need playing time. And right now, I mean, this Manitoba team, okay, they're number one in Canada. How would they stack up against uh, the nation's I think best? they'd be a good challenge for Ball State, but I don't think they'd go much further. Than middle that. of the top ten. Then. Right, middle of the top ten. Well, IPFW certainly not playing as well as they did last night. They had some breakdowns. Otherwise, they probably would have beaten George Mason. I think they're a little intimidated tonight. I mean, the first game, you know, they were just shell shocked and they got beat 15 to two. And and you could see guys. I mean, they were they didn't want the ball. And then they went into the timeout and and Felipe was in there cursing and swearing and kicking some butt. And they came out and they competed in the second game. This game here looks like they've loosened up a little bit more and they might even be two loose. How about Luna? What do you think of Justin Luna, the freshman? He needs to grow. <laughs> I mean, he's not. He's, he's a short player, and people automatically make the comparison because he's a good leaper, too, and he can really bounce it from the outside between uh, him and a, a guy who was a third-team All-American. He was here, Raul Papaleo. Yeah, i like to see him a few more games. I mean, Raul did everything. So far, Justin's, you know, he's, he's out. I want to see him play defense, too. Uh, He's got to he's got to be consistency that way, and he's a freshman. You know, that, you know, it's a second match, and you're already you know <laughs> judging him against Raul. That's you know <laughs> kind of crazy. Yeah, that is sort of crazy. Thanks but, for pointing that out, Blake. <laughs> but actually, you know, I mean, he's the same style of player. Yeah. Well, Blake, if you could, we could we'd like to talk to you about every time. Just check in on the national scene, as we mentioned before, Blake. Not only with his new Sentinel duties, but also writes for Volleyball Monthly and just uh, volleyball. Volleyball. They combine the two. Drop the monthly, and now it's it's cheaper too. They, they right? combine the two. Cheaper on the newsstand. Actually, it was pretty reasonable anyway. Oh, I, I didn't mean to put the product on. <laughs> well, thanks for stopping by, buddy. Okay, it's, thanks, uh, Paul. Three-one <laughs> IPFW. We'll visit with you every time we get a chance, Blake. Okay, thanks, thanks a lot, bud. Paul. IPFW trailing in this game, four to one. And Blake could talk all day about volleyball if he wanted to. Relat running the quick. Last year, Papa was uh, really the most consistent player down the stretch when IPFW had trouble against Ball State. That will be a serve there for Craig Collins. The IPFW's third ace for the evening. Got those eight service airs as well. That does not bode well. Not for a team that is behind two games to none. Here's Luna on the outside. Did he catch fingertips? Looked like it from up here, but none of the officials got it. It's always easier to play the game from up here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Back set. Collins bombing from the back row. Set wasn't high enough. That's another thing. This team is getting used to Scott, too. And uh, when Scott was out with the damaged right thumb, uh, there, was, there was lost practice time. He couldn't set the ball, and the team couldn't practice with it. Cut back by Rolot. IPFW. Well, when you look and just to back up Blake Sebring's assertions that he was making the IPFW really had two players firing right now for them. Paper Rallot is hitting a 467 hitting percentage and Rallot stuffed that time and Collins was hitting in a 389 clip through the first two games. The rest of the team pretty ugly. Everybody else in a negative situation except Justin Luna and the team was hitting just 154 and uh, that might get you a job in the uh, major leagues right now as a replacement player, but it's not going to do against number one team in Canada for sure. No, not when Manitoba's hitting their 373. It's quite a difference. Seven to two. Manitoba, this is Eric Smith back on serve. Be Manitoba's eight serving air as well tonight.
tough serve. Good pass by Luna on that. That time going right over the setter. Called out, there's another. I don't think I'd have called the touch. Looked like caught the antenna is what it must have touched. Was a little have tight. Some debate here. Good idea, they are gonna give the point to Manitoba. Point Manitoba. Good thought though. So they are going right down the line. Scott Koski. Pass was tight. I'm sure Scott went up, tried something to it, but didn't have a hitter that could get to it. David Will Hoyt coming back in. Yeah, I was just talking to his uncle here. He said he played for him, USBBA, just one year. The only volleyball experience Will Hoyt had. Good call by Collins on the line. Will Hoyt ducking. Service error, and now Lauer back on serve at 2 9. Wonder if he meant to leave his knee pads down. There he goes, <laughs> pulling him up. <laughs> yeah, remember, he's back in the game. Off the top of Solaire. Two to get it over. Rolot. Did he catch fingertips? He did. Got him. BFW will get a point on that touch, and Lauer will go back to serve. Once Pippa gets 100% and Lauer gets 100%, Rolot is going to be fun to watch. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> a lot of fire behind that one. Ken Cron. He can really take the air out of the ball. It's, it's a different sound when he hits it. Yeah, I don't, don't think I'd want to be the one behind <laughs> there digging that up. Of course, he also got a six-pack tonight, so maybe he just likes, you know. As uh, Koski was into the net, maybe he just likes inflicting pain on the ball or <laughs> getting some. I don't know. Martin's back row, a lot in position. A little bit of a whirly bird coming out of Lauer's hands that time. Double hit the call. Nine three Manitoba in game three. It's Collins off the block. They still had that double block up there on Collins. He's done well tonight. They're looking to go to him. He's been doing against a double block. That one will be touched. Side out Manitoba. And Scott Koski back to serve. If those are in Canada, that'd be Koski, huh? Yeah, you could say Koski. <laughs> Well, a side out war again, and IPFW will not win too many of these battles this year. They just don't have enough offensive weapons, enough diversity. A little off speed hit there. I don't think it was designed <laughs> for that. Credit the kill to Eric Smith. Our block was up and down before he ever reached <laughs> the ball. Zorowski on serve at 9-3. Pass there by Will Hoyt. And he'll put it down. Forrest, there you see it. He's a lefty. Different look. Two-man block uh, up that time. Got Lauer and Pepe Relot. Middle got over, read the set, read the hitter, put that one down. Back set to Mullen up with it. Sure, got someone in the net here, Fort Wayne. Relot into the net. Just rotated his hips into the net going up for that one. Yeah, that was quite a dig by Tremolin. Solaire dug up nicely. Another chance. 
They'll put that one down. Coach Ball feels that this guy is just coming out of his shell. He was always an excitable type of player. Big personality on the court, but he let Norman do a lot of the talking last year and Lloyd do a lot of the talking. And now he's starting to come into his own element a little more. And yeah, Norman and Loy are pretty vocal. I'm sure the oh, others yeah. didn't get too much <laughs> in. <laughs> now they know it's their role. Soler turned aside. King Cron really got most of that block. 10-4 score in game three. IPFW going to take a timeout right now. Talk it over. This will be their last chance to get back into this game, I think. I want to let you know uh, about Channel 6 sports schedule Thursday evening. It's coming to in town. Play the Lady Dons at 6 o'clock. And then on, uh, they will also play 8th ranked, 8th uh, ranked Kentucky Wesleyan will play the men at 8 o'clock. And then on Friday, the FW. Great Lakes Valley Conference action kicking off early uh, in volleyball. A couple teams moving into the Great Lakes Valley Conference next year, Wisconsin Parkside. Quincy has become a full member. Have to go down the list and check with Matt DeLong, but it's going to be a new look conference next year, more teams. Quick hitter. Nolan go up on the overpass. He won't get that one either. Boy, Noodle snapped that last one down, though. And Solaire still alive. Sure how they got behind that one. Dig that up. He'll Martin. Come again and put that one down. That was a different type arm swing from Solaire that time. Actually, a little kind bit of a, a hesitation. Swing. Yeah. <laughs> Hesitated just enough. The block was coming down and stuffed it between the block and the net. Woo! Man, he's Another fun to watch. Cron. Yeah, he is. I wouldn't mind them just running that quick hitter to see him snap <laughs> off a couple more. I'm sure Mike Termolin doesn't want to see any more of that. <laughs> no. 10 4. This is caught on serve. Back set. Relot. Termolin there with the block. Reset now outside. Back outside. They're going to tip it. Lauer will run that one down. Solaire with the set. Another reset. Again. Collins saves. This time Jules Martins will get it down. Another point Manitoba. Collins was cheating there a little bit toward the middle. Koski does not. Uh, does got, well, I'm having as much trouble as I've done tonight. <laughs> he disguised the set so well I couldn't even say it. Back set, nice back set to Martins. Really had a one Ooh, on in the net. Lauer's back shoulder just caught the net, trying to keep it from going over. 12-4 Manitoba in game three. And a shank by Ricky. He's done pretty good uh, at, at passing the ball tonight. Uh, that one was critical, uh, not pass it now. That tough serves over here by Manitoba, and IPFW will take another timeout. Last timeout for IPFW. The score is now with that service ace, 13-4 in game three. There will be an all-tournament team named. I'm sure Manitoba is going to have a lot of players at the top of the list. Jules Martins uh, will certainly be on that list, and Ken, Ken Cron. Cron. <laughs> yeah, there's not many hitters here this weekend, the way they've been putting the ball down. So we're going to take a break now. We'll come back. IPFW trailing in game three, 13 4. Just do it. It's a cool place. Call now. Go to work, go to school, go ahead.
Back to live action. Collins with a kill and IPFW with a side out. They call in the net there. I'm not sure I saw it. I thought the call was going to be outside the antenna. Side at now for Manitoba. Cron on serve. 13-4. Pass by Solaire. Down by Will Hoyt off the block. It'll go out. Side out Fort Wayne. I haven't seen that play. Koski on serve at 13-4. Service ace, point Manitoba. Eighth Manitoba, and they'll go back and serve for game point now. It's 14-4. Let's we'll see if we can uh, chat with Craig Collins afterwards. Paper a lot is uh, getting treatment for his back immediately after the game. He has certainly played well. Collins has played a good game as well for IPFW, so we'll talk to, to him. Will Hoyt and Manitoba in the net. Ooh. IPFW is going to get the side out. No, they're going to call that um, one. No, they are going to call Martins into the net. I think the score okay. thinking. <laughs> <laughs> they had 15-4 up on the board. Collins will get a shot to knock some points off here. Tough serve over pass <laughs> and Papo put that down. That play is very difficult. Timing and you have to wait till that ball comes over on your side of the net. Papo did it so well. Ooh, another good serve by Collins. And a smoke from Zorowski. Another swing for match point. Lair with the pass, Spider with the hit. That one's gonna be touched off his arm in the back row. That one had quite a bit behind it. Collins is really effective from the right side. Just a case of IPFW not having enough players out on the floor right now to compete with Manitoba. A lot there, but off the hand. Once again, Manitoba will serve for game point. Eric Smith, lob it over, Solaire with the pass. And now an opportunity, Manitoba. That one's gonna be good. Jules Martin, so it's 15-2, 15-10, 15-5, Manitoba. Comes into the weekend 31-0, leaves at 33-0. IPFW is 0-2 to start this season. Ohio State also went to George Mason beating Ohio State earlier. Uh, the score was George Mason 15-8, 11-15, 15-13, and 15-2. So George Mason leaves here 2-0 on the weekend. We're going to take a timeout right now. Have uh, hopefully Craig Collins on the floor. Maybe the all-tournament team before we leave. Michelle Conley will have a final look at the stats right after this. Year IPFW women's basketball coach Pam Bowden is enjoying a fine preseason after coming to IPFW from the University of Alaska Anchorage. She has inherited a club which returns no seniors but still enjoys one of the top ratings in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. We want you to tune in every Wednesday at 7.30 to find out more information about the IPFW women's basketball team all season long. In our ever-expanding world, we need a reliable source, one that addresses important aspects of our daily lives and provides us with useful information. Health and Home Report is that source, with stories on how to get the most for your money, where to go for a great vacation, hot fashion tips, what's happening in the world of arts and entertainment, and the latest medical breakthroughs. Health and Home Report provides a world of information.
The college basketball season is underway for 1994-95, and the Great Lakes Valley Conference has been rated by some as the toughest of the NCAA Division II conferences. Join Coach Andy Piazza and me, Matt DeLong, to get a closer look at the IPFW team and this year's competition. Tim Heffern. Watch us every Friday evening at 7 p.m. for IPFW Volley Down Highlights. We'll also describe strategies and fundamentals for all you new volleyball fans. We, we may even invite a volley down or two to join us on the show, so tune in to us every Friday night at 7 p.m. here on Channel 6. responded by shooting uh, 30. How can you find out when lightning may strike? And how do you count the fish in the sea? How can you tell if a child is growing normally, if baseball is getting better, or traffic is getting worse? How do you know about stock market trends, the risk of cholesterol, the history of witchcraft, or the future of spacecraft? With statistics, that's how. And how can you find out about statistics? With the new statistics series, Against All Odds. Children are the largest group of Americans living below the poverty line. They have to reach higher for what others take for granted. Health care, balanced meals, encouragement to learn. But with help early on, children in your community can gain the skills to get out from below the poverty line. It takes programs like Success by Six and people like you to help them take the first step. Call to learn more. Change the world of a child and you change the world. Welcome back to IPFW, where Manitoba has just beat IPFW in three, 15-2, 15-10, and 15-5. We at IPFW are pleased to be able to bring you cable cast of NCAA athletic competition. We hope you've enjoyed the show and the excitement of intercollegiate sports from IPFW. To provide such programs, we need your support. With the help of many volunteers, we are able to produce these programs at a relatively low cost. Your contribution will help defray the production costs not covered by the Channel 6 budget. The College Cable Access Center invites you to invest in quality college programming by sending your comp contribution to Channel 6 at IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805. Thank you very much, Michelle. Uh, now down on the floor, Paul's down here for an interview with Craig Collins. Thank Paul? you very much, Michelle. Down here on the floor with uh, Spider-Man Collins, and uh, it's no fun after these losses. So thanks for coming on. This team has got some problems right now passing the ball, and it all starts with a pass, and it doesn't allow Scott to run the offense. Yeah, it all starts with a pass. They were serving tough, but uh, they just stuck it to us, and we couldn't do nothing about it. We tried to. We tried to switch up a little bit, but things didn't happen out the way we wanted to happen tonight. It's really tough for this team because you really haven't had a lot of practice time when we throw all these new players in there. It's tough for any type of chemistry on the court to develop, especially against a team like Manitoba. It's really tough. Yeah, we have uh, we have a young team. As you know, we only have uh, three seniors on the court and uh, two freshmen and one uh, sophomore. It's, it's really hard. We're in a rebuilding stage right now, and we're going to lose a couple games. We lost these two, and we just have to rebuild on them. That's, that's simple as plain and simple. Well, you didn't play as, uh, as, as, uh, as, you know, I think you played well tonight is what I'm trying to say. You and Rolot did what you could, but this team has to get that type of performance from every player, and it's going to be tough because they don't have the experience of playing tough teams like this. Right, and that comes from uh, the seniors, uh, myself, Philippe. And I think I didn't do a very good job of this this weekend. I tried to. I thought I played and try to draw off energy from those younger guys. That's one thing I have to work on. That's one thing about leadership right there. 
and I have to step it up a notch. Okay, Wisconsin Milwaukee coming in here next Friday. That one counts in the books as a conference game. What do you have to do to beat them? We just gotta go out there. So like Craig, we're stepping by. Dandy Don, player of the game. Let's go back upstairs. Michelle Conley can put a wrap on this. Thanks, Craig. The telecast of this IPFW sports event is copyrighted and the sole property of the College Here's Cable look. Access Center and IPFW. Unauthorized duplication, exhibition, retransmission, rebroadcast, or other use of this event without express written consent is strictly prohibited. Don't forget to tune in to Channel 6 Thursday, January 26 at 6 p.m. to see GLVC basketball action as the Lady Panthers take on the IPFW Lady Dons. Then at 8, the men's team from Kentucky Wesleyan match up with the Dons for... For Paul Foulball, this is Michelle Conley. Goodbye for now.